What are you afraid of? That ghost or the leg. How do you feel when this pair of eyes looking at you? How do you feel when hundreds of pairs of eyes looking at you? Are you nervous? Scared? Or the feeling of being judged? This is exactly how I felt nine years ago when I first stood on the stage. When I was 19, I worked at an educational institute as a coach assistant. My job is to assist the teacher to teach public speaking for the students. One day, my boss came up to me and said that, Hey, Lena, I believe that your skill right now is strong enough in order to lead your own class. Please be well prepared to handle your own class next week. Really? Then you just ask me do you leave my own class? Did you just hear that? Yeah, please be well prepared for the next week. Okay. I was so excited and I believed in myself that I could do it at first. But when I was truly on the stage already, my legs and arms were just shaking. My head was racing. And my mind just blacked out. I even couldn't remember the next word that I'm going to say. I stood there like a statue with hundreds of pairs of eyes looking at me. Silent. I went home from that terrifying experience and it left a lot of deep talk in my mind. I went to Google and researched the reason why I'm so afraid of public speaking. And guess what? Millions of answers just appear on the screen, but the answer didn't satisfy me. But what I found really interesting is that a survey conducted in the United States in 1973, they said that, what is the biggest fear according to you? And they asked for around 2,500 people. And guess what? What is the result? The result is 40% people say that public speaking is the biggest fear according to all of them. But what I found really even more interesting is that not only this answer but also a lot of famous people around the world, they also afraid of public speaking such as Chris Anderson, the founder of TED, or even Richard Branson, they also afraid of public speaking or even Warren Buffett, Max Zuckerberg. But the point is that they didn't have that fear to conquer themselves, but they just eventually practiced public speaking and inspired thousands of people to get over public speaking skill. One example is Chris Anderson. He used to say that if there is one skill that he would encourage every school to add in the curriculum, that is presentation literacy. And what I'm talking, he used to say that if you have public speaking skill, your values could be increased up to 50%. Tommy Gallo, the author of Talk Like Ted Book, he used to say that if you can communicate your ideas persuasively, you can advance your career tremendously. A few years ago, in English, that is a nice to have skill in Vietnam. Now today, that is a must have skill if you would like to work in the multinational corporation. Because right before you enter the MNC, they ask you to be interviewed in English. And whenever you're in there already, they ask you to present thousands of presentations in English as well. So you might ask that, what is your competitive advantage in the workplace? Now today it's not English anymore, but that is presentation skill. The purpose of my speech today is to inform you what are the reason why we're so afraid of public speaking and also what are the methods in order to help you ease public speaking anxiety. I believe that some of you sitting here, you already have 
the world the idea that you would like to share to the world. But imagine that if your idea just stuck on your head without really speaking out to the world, could you change the world or not? Definitely not. In order to have one idea to change the world, that idea must leak out from your mind Maybe to dozens of people mind, or millions of people mind, or billions of people mind, so that they can be persuaded and inspired to take action. The success of your idea's conversion depends largely on your public speaking abilities, because you need to use your body language in order to visualize the message. You need to use your voice in order to make it so memorable. And also, you need to structure your idea in a way that audience can understand immediately, and then they can be inspired to take action. Public speaking is so powerful that it could turn wars into peace. Or even many geniuses, they use it in order to communicate their ideas to the world and change the world. Imagine that if Steve Chow, he didn't share with us that they would like to create a touchable smartphone, how could we have an iPhone today? And imagine that if Martin Luther King, he didn't deliver the speech, I have a dream, how could he inspire millions of people in order to end racism in the United States? And imagine that if Chris Anderson, he didn't say that he would like to build the community for experts in order to share the experience in their field, how could we have the tech external event today? However, in order to create a public speaking, there is one first challenge that you need to face. That is public speaking anxiety. Whenever we face public speaking fear, there is a set of belief or thoughts just underlies public speaking fear. There is a tendency that you're gonna think about the past or even imagine the worst case that's going to happen in the future. For example, as Asian kids, we are taught not to make a lot of mistakes, not to ask a lot of questions, or not to be wrong, or not to expose our personality too much. And whenever we lose those things, we're going to be punished by our, either our parents, our teachers, or even older people. And when we get older, we just subconsciously carry those thoughts in our mind. And whenever we stand over here, our speech just invoke again. And that is the first reason why you are afraid of public speaking, just because something already happened in the past. And it leads you to the current stage. That whenever you're on the stage, that fear just elaborated again. The second reason why you are afraid of public speaking is because our mind just imagine the worst case is going to happen in the future. Have you ever caught yourself saying to yourself that I'm going to screw up everything? I'm going to mess up everything? My ideas is not really interesting enough. Oh, I'm so nervous. People are going to criticize me or they're going to judge me. Before, just right before you step, the first step on the stage, you're already knocked down by thousands of negative thoughts. Mind and body are connected. Whenever your mind just generates thousands of negative thoughts, it affects your body tremendously. You're gonna have twice now, you're gonna be shaking, you're gonna have numbness, you're so afraid, and you cannot be straightened anymore, or sometimes you just lean on the lectern, or you hunch your back. Those body language just signal to your brain that you are in a very distressful situation now and you're not confident at all. And then your brain just continuously generating more and more and more negative thoughts. And it affects your body immediately. And that's why this is a vicious circle that it never ends. I practiced public speaking for nine years and another five years of meditation. But before I practiced meditation, I was always nervous on the stage. But the more I practiced meditation, the more it transformed my life 
up to the point that I could represent Vietnam to travel to the other countries and join two international public speaking contests. And in both times, I only dropped the prize for Toastmaster community in Vietnam. But more importantly, what meditation has helped me is that it helped me understand different perspectives of public speaking that I may could ever imagine. At first, it's really challenging for you to distinguish or understand what is the correlation between public speaking and meditation. How could it be linked to each other, right? But what, what science has shown is that inside of your brain, there is one part we call the amygdala. The amygdala, that's in the part of your brain that responds for fight or flight. It means that whenever you're nervous, you're so scared, that part of your brain is going to be activated. So that's why that right now we need to find out a method in order to help you get calm down this part of the brain. And it doesn't mean that whenever you try this talk today and after this talk, there's a magical moment that happens to you that you're not nervous anymore whenever you stay here. It doesn't work that way. But what we can do right now is to use meditation as a part to support you calm down this part of the brain whenever you nervous. What science has shown is I'll have a study whenever your mind is so clear and calm it helps your body as well because whenever it's clear and relaxing your body also relaxing and whenever your body is relaxing your mind also relaxing because mind and body are connected at first it's really challenging for me to practice meditation because my mind always think about thousands of other things whether it's going to think about the past or even imagine the worst thing that happen in the future but sometimes even though that i get negative thought or i got back pain shoulder pain or even butt pain everything is painful whenever i sit for meditation or sometimes i just fell asleep while i practice meditation but i told myself that I couldn't give up. One year later, my effort was rewarded. That was the first time in my life that I see everything so crystal clear that I could understand the reason why I'm so afraid of public speaking. When I was a child, my parents always expected me to be the top student in the class. But then that is one year that I couldn't make it. My parents came up to me and said, Hey Lena, we spend a lot of money on your tuition fee and this is the result with us. Could you imagine that as a very fragile, vulnerable and little kid, the only thing I could do at that time is to follow my parents' instruction without disappointing them. And I didn't know that I just carried those subconscious thoughts to my life until when I was nine years ago, the first time I stood on the stage and I was so nervous. The reason why I was so nervous is because I was so afraid to disappoint talent of people sitting over here due to my poor performance. And it's just exactly the same that my parents used to give to me. I was so afraid because I, was, I disappointed my parents due to my poor performance. With meditation, it helped me to understand the root cause of my problem. But it doesn't mean that I'm going to just run away from it. But gradually, I look into it, I stop it, and then it will fade away. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what is your theories of change is, but I do believe that a single idea could change the world. I mean, I do. But unless that your ideas must leak out from your mind to perhaps dozens of people's mind, or perhaps millions of people's mind, or perhaps 
millions of people might, so that people can be persuaded and inspired to take action with you. At the beginning of our talk today, I used to show you this picture. This is a very scary eye. But if you look at this pair of eyes with another perspective, you may see something really different. Let's see, I need a cute cat. The way that you look at public speaking at the beginning of our talk today is exactly the same when you look at the scary eyes. But if you look at public speaking in another perspective, you may see that it's just as cute as this little cat. Our event theme today is Control, Alt, Delete, which means reset your thinking or look at things in another perspective. I challenge all of you here today to take any opportunities in the coming event, either at schools or even at the client meetings or even at the team meetings, so that you can pick up your ideas and you eventually practice and strengthen your public speaking ability and use meditation as a strategy to ease your public speaking anxiety. Don't wait until that you are about to have a milestone presentation next month and then you start training on your public speaking skill and practice meditation today because no skill can ever be mastered just overnight. But I believe that with the support of meditation and also public speaking, it could help you to become a better person. And eventually, you can contribute your worthy idea and make this world a better place to live. Back to you.